Woke up on the ground floor of a friend's house wishing I had not drunk so much the night before. Started the year with a five day fever. Presented and co-produced the LOL Experiment, an online community project set up to find out if the love letter is a dying art. I joined the gym and started meditating weekly for a few weeks. <laughs> Was shortlisted for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Royal Mail put my face on a first class stamp for Valentine's Day. Witnessed the Arab Spring online and became increasingly concerned about the world's stability. Woke up in the middle of the night with a panic attack. I just felt an overwhelming urgency to do more to help the world. I joined the Zeitgeist movement. Received aggressive attacks from people because I started advocating a resource-based economy. And to be honest, I took it quite personally. Unable to sleep most nights, became unemployed. Turned 24 and spent the evening having a bro date with, yes you guessed it, my sister. Actually, no, it was my brother. I don't, I don't have a sister. Played my first gig since rejoining the band Down Within. Grinding my teeth a lot while sleeping and spitting blood into the sink every morning. Filmed epic drink time. Scattered the ashes of my granddad and grandmother on the Isle of Wight. My hero, Burton C. Bell, emailed me saying, I am proud of you for being the person you want to be. I started using VU.com, a fantastic online education tool. I found a quote which described my moment in time so very well. It was by Nietzsche. It went, and those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. I took a two-week break from the internet. I designed the Universal Solutions Project, and I really got into Minecraft. I received a phone call one night from a withheld number. They said, Thank you, thank you. Your video saved my life. And then they hung up. I just wish I had a chance to respond, but I hope they're still okay if they're watching this right now. I still needed to find a job. I produced a music video for the band Star Turn on 45 Pints. I left the Zeitgeist movement. I always saw it as just a gateway for finding other people who give a damn about the world. And uh, I was ready to move on. I ran myself physically and mentally exhausted. I was approached by online broadcaster Channel Flip who wanted me to work for them. And I got the job. YouTube marketing Jedi. Had a photo shoot with my band. On just the second day of work, I met British comedy legend David Mitchell. I made someone cry. They told me they just didn't realise there were people out there who cared so much about the world. And I met businessmen who were trying to justify to me what they were doing in life and saying how they wish they could do more. It was a very strange experience to say the least. I found an awesome elevator and I hosted a segment for the charity Live for Japan. Channel Flip was truly a dream job. I flew out to Boston to see my parents. I watched the Stanley Cup final. I visited 95 year old Jacques Fresco in Venus, Florida a day that will stay with me for the rest of my life. My dad, who came with me on this trip, began to understand what I'd been so focused on the past year, and it brought us closer together. And I finally got to meet my good friend Melissa. Discovered a close relative of mine was terminally ill. I wrote lyrics for a song called Not Yet Darko. When walking to work, I saw an old homeless man rummaging through garbage for food. And I turned to my friend and I said, the difference between that man and myself is circumstance. And it's for that reason alone that this world should live with unconditional love. I flew out to California, where I spoke on main stage at VidCon 2011. This is going to be an awkward question because I might get no response, but has anyone heard of Stick Aid? <laughs> I got my answer. I was starting to have faith in my cause again, trying to use the internet as a vehicle for social change. I bought this cool new shirt in Venice Beach, and this one, but which one do you prefer? I recorded a debut album with my band, now called Schemata Theory. I ate some KFC breakfast cereal. Current TV wanted to make a documentary about my theory to cure various forms of depression called Expressive Insight. Overworked from organising Stick A 2011, I became ill, and thus stressed, and thus more ill and thus more stressed. It finally dawned on me how alone I actually am. I gave a talk about global empathy at a Save the Children conference, hosted the UNICEF fundraiser Stick A 2011 at Ravensbourne College, where 1.2 million people tuned in and $30,000 was raised. I explained at the end that fundraising events is just the beginning of what online community needs to do. Having heard the news about Steve Jobs, I started watching videos about him, and he inspired me even after he died. That to me is legacy. Got given the channel URL, youtube.com forward slash miles, woo! I watched Occupy Wall Street live streams with amazement. Relaunched my show, Podcast 376. I realized that we've developed a culture where many people have become complacent in taking responsibility for their world. I visited Occupy London Stock Exchange. Was invited to a UNICEF talk with Lord Ashdown who took a great interest in my suggestions for dealing with world hunger and poverty. Discovered a friend of mine is terminally ill. Was asked to speak at VidCon 2012. Oh hi everyone, 
I went to see the room in London. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Bought lights for my studio. Had an evening to relax at the Modern Warfare 3 launch party. Got to meet another hero of mine, talk show host James O'Brien. Spoke on LBC 97.3 about Occupy London, defending it against Peter Hitchens. Had a bubble bath with my friend Benjamin Cook. Shocked at seeing yet more police brutality, this time in the French capital. Getting increasingly worried about PIP and SOPA legislation. Got food poisoning. Found the most epic diagram of money circulation, link in description. Distraught by how ruthless humans can become when put under certain conditions. Was a zombie for the music video Forever Yours, which ranked number four in the UK Christmas charts. Listened to the Secret Society speech by John F. Kennedy. Threw up after being told a friend of mine had died, but after some texting, I realised it was just a hoax. Used to be someone who stayed away from internet memes, but then I took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> ah, f Not the other knee. Not again. My sick relative was given two weeks to live and therefore was unlikely to make Christmas. I told him to keep a positive mindset. Took down my studio wall. Appeared in a ghetto Christmas story with Malam TV. I'm sorry, but there's no room at the motel. Watched videos of Christopher Hitchens because he'd recently died. Another post-death inspiration to me. Spent Christmas with my close relative who stayed positive and strong. I'm so glad he made it. I feel pretty beaten up after this year to be honest, but I survived and thus have come out much stronger. I've discovered the ability to become a critical thinker and as a result every day I research. I've realised that ignorance is bliss, but now I know what I know, it can't be unlearnt and I'm never going to be the same again. Every person I've spoken to, whether stranger, friend or family, I'd begin to explain with care the real issues we face in this world and what the potential solutions are. And the response has been truly inspiring. I've experienced a lot of death this year, with many people having their lives cut short due to illness or society's negligence. Although people like Steve Jobs and Christopher Hitchens did leave legacies behind, their lives were taken away when they were still making progress. And the same could be said for those that took to the streets fighting for their freedom. They lost their lives. And we're still here today. And this has made me reflect on my own mortality. I need to stop making excuses for myself. I need to start taking care of my body. I need to start eating better and taking regular exercise. Because the truth is you only get one body in life and if you fuck it up, there is no replacement. My mind is now stronger with knowledge and experience, but it requires a decent physical well-being to support it. And so, I now live every day as if it's my last. And I don't mean with desperation, but with efficiency. And in the new year, I'm gonna start preparing myself for the future, for the long run. 2011 was a year of sacrifice for me. I threw aside all the trivial aspects of my life and began focusing on what really matters, the bigger picture. But because of this, a lot of people that I know have now turned their back on me. And so if you're watching this right now, thank you. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. From the bottom of my heart. I'll see you in 2012. Adios until then.